Paul Marsh and today in this video I'll be talking about using Gaia to add some effects to your terrain. So in a previous video I got this terrain and I was using Vegetation Studio Pro and a set of splat map rules to paint some of the terrain textures in. So you can see we've got some grass, it gets quite hilly, uh, where we've got really strong angles then we've got this rock kind of formation here and then where the elevation is very flat it becomes more sandy with these bits of sort of pebbly bits on the slight, slightly flatter surfaces and that was okay and you can see where it works quite well places like that and where it really doesn't work quite well and to be fair, I didn't put a lot of effort into getting Vegetation Studio Pro to create a nice result there. It was quite quick. So I don't want to be disparaging to Vegetation Studio Pro. Um, that was my laziness rather than its inability to do this work. But I wanted to show another product that is probably a bit more well known for producing good looking terrains. And that is Gaia Pro. So I'm just going to come up here and get the Gaia Manager. So show Gaia Manager. Okay, it doesn't seem to be showing. Hello, Gaia Manager. Hmm, took a long time. Here's the Gaia Manager. I'll cut that later. So here's a guy manager and it has a basic sort of setups. And it, what it wants you to do is create a new terrain. And the reason it wants you to do that is because it's a sort of from zero to 10 kind of a tool. You start off with nothing and it will do a lot of the work for you in this wizard. Now I've already got a terrain, so I don't really want it to create a new one. But if you were starting off from scratch and you wanted to create a fantasy terrain and a new terrain doesn't exist in the world, then you'd be recommended to follow these these steps and have Gaia create a terrain for you. Now, I don't want that because my terrains in my kind of work life, they come from the real world. So I don't want Gaia producing these for me. So that's fine. You don't need to um, deal with the terrain right here. You've got some tools and these kind of stamper tools and biomes. So we introduced biomes before and you can see that Gaia has all these different sorts of um, biomes put in there straight away. So we've got a coniferous forest, alpine meadow, you know, lots of different biomes. So that's quite cool. And stamper is a term that you'll see used a lot in Gaia. Um, it basically means using a paintbrush type metaphor to paint onto the scene various different things. Now, with the biome, you're going to be stamping onto the terrain, like a kind of type stamp. You're going to put on Alpine Meadow biome stuff. And that's what it means here. But you will see later that there are different sorts of um, stampers, you know, spawners and all sorts of different terms you'll see come out of Gaia. That's fine. And then you've got a kind of run time. So what's really nice about Gaia is you get uh, different sorts of effects. So we've got some sort of nice sky effects, clouds, you can have a sort of ambient audio, so you can get kind of bird noises, that sort of thing. You get some nice utilities like the screenshotter and underwater effects. Uh, and also you can get a nice sort of basic FPS style controllers or third person controllers car controllers you know you've got different ways of quite quickly getting into using your terrain as you would in the game so that's all good useful stuff to have and finally we've got some kind of light baking things well as it says light baking so these are all got light processing effects that you can add to the scene so it's got a nice sort of fully featured set of tools to get a terrain up and going and we'll just move on to standard. So in the standard, we've got just a nice little bit here about your system. 
again, if you're using Gaia to create trains and you've got um, some tools here to actually help you do it, actually do the terrain, uh, create some interesting types of worlds, as they call them, the terrains, using their designer. We've got some tools. So here is where we can see the list of biomes. So we've got uh, all of our alpine forest biomes again. So I could, uh, so should these prototypes be automatically added to the scene? So we can add those um, directly in. So let's do that now actually. So if I add biome here, As you'll see in the right now, I've got these different spawners come in. And what I'll do is I'll also add coniferous forest. Okay, so that, that's done those. And so that's the biomes. Now, it's got a separate concept of spawners. So if you just look to the note, it looks right here and note you'll see that there's these biome spawners so you can see that we've got some spawners within the type of stuff that the biome does it includes these spawners but you can add spawners separately so they don't have to be necessarily um, use the ones that are in a biome so you can add uh, other ones in there so we've added coniferous forest and alpine meadow Um, but rather than add a new biome, I could say, well, let's add some, uh, so we see here, some pine trees from the giant forest, and I could just add that spawner uh, kind of directly in. And just to quickly finish off this uh, list here of stuff we can do, We've got extensions so you, other products can uh, extend Gaia so there are other things to do um, like water and skies as it says here and you can bring those in but the thing we're going to be mostly working with are now these biomes in the session manager now if we go to Alpine Meadow first and we, we pull back the scene you'll see this big red cube has appeared now this is the biome so as we mentioned before in a previous video where we had a biome for the river you can set your biome to be different shapes and represent different areas so it doesn't have to represent the whole terrain now in my case i want it to represent the whole terrain so what you can do you can come over here and you say fit to terrain and hopefully if i can just pull back enough you can see where that cube is now, and it's kind of outside of my terrain. There's a little bit on there. So if I said um, spawn biome, setting uh, trends. So you can see that this area is now shaded a bit differently. And it's just taking this corner off because that's the bit that overlaps this red cube in the terrain. And you can see that we've got our alpine spawner in. And what alpine meadow's done is it's used its own splat map tools. And you can see that it's got quite a rocky um, sort of surface and the textures here, quite grassy and kind of like a rocky lot more sort of and there's little bits of spawned rocks uh, it's pretty ugly scene to be honest but there uh, you know it's tried to sort of mix in these terrains you know when you get close you can see it's kind of leaves and moss and just bits and bobs of rock around and, uh, and painting this sort of thing is as I said before was quite arduous to do and it's kind of scattered some uh, assets these little bits of trees and little rocks so it spawned all of these around the area and that's kind of fine um, but really 
what I want to do is I want to say fit to terrain. So when I do that, oh, I'm not going to giant forest. Hang on a second. Go to Alpine, say fit to terrain. Now you can see that the cube has now, the red cube for the biome is now all the way around my terrain. So next time I do spawn, you can see now that it's applied those rules to the whole of the terrain. I mean, do I like the result? Mm, not particularly, but you can kind of see what it's done, you know, where we've got these different sorts of elevations and different heights, like we were experimenting with Vegetation Studio Pro. We can see that Gaia's got this sort of built-in rules and it's doing a job to produce an area for us. I mean, I'm not massively pleased with the results, but there we go. That's what Guy is doing for us there. And if we look at the visualizer, which is a bit like the color map that we saw in Vegetation Studio Pro, you can see that this thing is affecting the whole of that area. I haven't got any masks on, so we can see that this thing is going to affect the whole of it. And if we go to go um, to Gaia Village, for example, um, we've got some masks here. So these are the kind of splat map type rules that we were referring to from Vegetation Studio Pro. So we've got a similar kind of thing going on here. I'm just trying to see where the visualizer is. Somewhere there is a visualizer. I'll have to try and find that. So the visualizer is these little eyes here. So if we can turn on, on, on. On, on, on. So these little colors here give you different maps, color maps. Did I click that? Is there a maximum? Oh, it's not ticked on. So I don't have snow and snow drifts. That's fine. So now we can see where our different color maps are hitting. And this is really kind of looks like a 3D splat map. You can kind of see where these things are blending in. So I can just toggle them all off in one go or toggle them all on. So I can see that this uh, blue area, yeah. So this stone moss, you can kind of see where this is going to be going. And how do you play around with it? Yeah, so you've got these slope masks and height masks, which is kind of what we had in, um, in Pro, in Vegetation Studio Pro. Uh, so we've got our curves and they've got our maximum height. So it's it's a little bit more information than we got in Vegetation Studio Pro, a little bit more detail to play around with. Um, which is why Gaia is probably more suited to doing this kind of work than Vegetation Studio Pro. Uh, yeah, so we can play around with these different settings and effect how we're going to, you know, the kind of results that we're going to get. Is this the, am I on the blue one? Yeah. Light blue grass. Oops. So you can see it's doing it in runtime or real time. So we can play around with those curves. I'm not going to get into that because as we saw before, I'm useless at using curves. But anyway, so this is a good way of producing your terrain using Gaia Pro. And let's just have a bit of fun with this now. So we've put some Alpine stone in here. So look at this one. Can we see it? So there's going to be lots of stone going in. And what's 
just moss. It's not like there's much in the way of moss. No, but we do have do have a lot of stone. So we can add these rules, spawn. Got a few more rocks in there now. Uh, um, trees, let's have, look, let's have some trees. Please enable the draw instance in the terrain inspector settings on all terrains. Let's have a look at that. Irritating me. Draw instance, there we go. So back to pro to trees. That's spawn local. I don't see any trees. Really? Okay, let's have a little look why. So let's put the red. Uh, Seems to suggest it's going to spawn some trees. Interesting. Why hasn't it? So if we go to the terrain manage normally, I can see my trees in here, and I go to paint the tree, and it's not appearing. So this makes me think it's not actually a Gaia issue. This is something else. And that made me remember something I'd seen before and if I just bring in my page if I can can't paint train trees on your unity to train now it turns out I'd seen this problem before and there's this little line here that I should turn on so I'm hoping I'm hoping this is the same issue here so I turn this drawer on whoa hello it's tree time. Okay, Oof, that was confusing. For a long time that was confusing me. So, finally, alpine trees. Okay. So these are our alpine trees. Looks like we're getting some other trees in here as well. But yeah, okay, so we've got a nice sort of set of trees going on. So that's textures. Uh, do we get a village? Oh, I think we've got a little village I noticed pop in the corner up there on top of the hill. How <laughs> cute. Some little, uh, yeah, little farm buildings and nice. <laughs> And we've got a sort of grassy slopes down there. We've got our different sorts of trees. And here, different sizes, there's a different randomness and heights and widths to, and density to these trees, all created by these different rules. It's very nice. Um, perhaps add some bushes. I can't say I immediately saw those bushes come in. But... Okay. Ferns. Let's see if I can see where they're going to go. I can't see much blue on the ferns. So you can play around with the uh, splat map rules to get these ferns in. A pine meadow. I'm just going to put these on. Spawn local. Spawn local. Spawn local.
We've got some errors there. Spawn, uh, some effects. It's quite interesting. Well, we've got butterflies, birds, pollen. Oh, cute. Let's try that. Ah, do you know what? I know what I haven't done. Fit to terrain. Fit to terrain. Fit to terrain. Fit to terrain. Okay, let's just make sure that one's there. That's there, it's all there. So let's just go and do this again. So you can clear spawns as well, that's a nice uh, function. Spawn local. Let's just do spawn, yeah, spawn biome here. Yeah, it seems to be doing all of them. In fact, I can do fit to terrain here. <laughs> okay, so what do we have now? Let's have a little look around. So we've got our rocks, we've got some little bushes, got some nice grass in here. Lovely sets of trees, nice little bits of rock and moss on the rock and bushes on the rock and yeah, from a distance it looks kind of green stuff but when you get in there as, as a player character might it's starting to look a little bit more like a kind of surface that you might believe is true. That's kind of rocky area here, you're not getting much grass. So trees, some lovely little kind of plants, flowers and stuff appearing in that little well. Yeah, it's very, oh, we've got some sound effectors coming in here. It's not looking too bad. And even the river, which I haven't sorted out yet because that's a different asset. But the ground that the river is cut away, you can see that it's added the rocks. And it's all looking quiet, even before I attempt to clear the river up. It's actually not looking too bad. You know, these little, little farmhouses. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. So that's really the, the kind of an alternative biome and splat map generator and it's got this concept of spawners which allows you to add and remove items rather than add all of it in one go and take all of it out in one go you can sort of play around with this these little bits and use a similar sort of splat map rules so yeah that's that's the kind of uh, the power of Gaia there and I'm not sure whether it, did I enable, I'm just going to press run here. I'm not sure if I enabled the little character controller. Oh, doesn't look like I did. Oh, there's a bird flying there. Look, how oh, cute. Right, so let's see how I've so it should be that we go to the manager. Bring up the guy manager. Uh, tools. Find meadow, runtime, player control, flying camera. Okay. Let's do first person. Let's see if that's worked. Oh, that's interesting. Something's happened to the scene. This has lost a lot of the biomes. Interesting. Do you have to regenerate these? Ah, great runtime. Interesting.
Oeh, loads of houses now. So this is, uh, I believe, is to do with the order of the biomes. So, because it's got a collision thing. It's allowed it to generate all these houses. So if I unpick this, uh, clear the following. Yes, clear. Okay, and if I just go to textures first, let's first turn off go our village. Does that turn it off from here? Uh, and let's see, do it from here. So I don't want the village spawner. Let's just try that. Hmm, okay. That's not done what I'd expect it to do. So I think it's a problem I had with the sea level. So I was playing around with the sea level before, and I think that might have been an a terrible mistake as part of the height rules. I think I've messed them up. So I've just raised the sea level now a little bit. So it's actually coming into the, coming onto the island as it were. So we've got a nice little sea effect, got a nice little kind of beach now. So the rules are that we've got our beach next to the sea level, some grasses on the beach. We've got our tree line has come back. Uh, I don't see any, oh, there's a bit of a village. So we got, that's quite nice. Yeah, that's much nicer. So there are, because there's so many different rules, splat map rules, uh, yeah, you can fall foul of it. I'm certainly falling foul of it. Um, any little adjustment can really affect it. Nice little uh, kind of flower bed. And you can see that the textures are still a bit repeated in at points, that it's not perfect. And that's where you get yet another series of tools, which I'll have a look at at a later date, about how to make your terrain textures look better. And I'll try and cover that at a later date. Now let's see if the, the runtime thing actually worked. So I'll set to first person. Let's see if I can get that working. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so where is the controller? How do I know where the controller is? Guy runtime. Guy a player. So are there any terrains? Has the terrain got a... It's got tree colliders, has it got its own collider? Let's just run that. Let's just see if it was just a collider issue. So we've got nice little kind of footsteps. All the things you'd expect. This little wind noise. On top of the rocks. So already I've got... Ah, oh, nice little ambient music. Haven't seen any birds yet. Butterflies. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. Oh, there's a bird. Ah, oh, that's nice. 
So you can imagine you can get to oh look it's butterflies. Oh cute. So you can get a game going pretty uh, pretty sharpish really. Nice little sort of effects of whatever those are supposed to be. <laughs> Some sort of insect. Hitting the tree colliders. Some nice little plants. Nice little meadow here. It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's a bit tricky to sort of understand when it goes wrong what to do. Oh, they're really nice trees. See what it's like going on the beach. Run into the ocean. I loved that ocean sound effect earlier. That was brilliant. Obviously, I'm not finding my depth. Some rocks in the sea. Ah, oh, how nice is that? That's a lovely rendering. I'm going to step off the edge of the terrain here. <laughs> it's not so good. There. Into the depths. Yeah, so that's... I hope that <laughs> this little intro to doing something a little bit more interesting with your terrains using Gaia it's been helpful and you can see that i mean it just gives you so much or takes away so much of the effort of getting a, a little demo going and it's just a it is incredible and it's pretty decent looking and as i say hopefully we can have a look at yet another tool to make the terrain look even more realistic okay thanks <laughs>